this milkshake caused a rage quit. Cue the music. Welcome back. Trying to show why EverQuest deserves more respect in the MMO genre. As well, if I die, there will be real consequences at the end. Last episode, linked in the description and comments. We're in the home stretch. I have finished work on the weekend and had all day to play. And I log on before my static group and team up with a different group. Doing the highest level camp in Lower Guck called Hamlord, Reanimated Hand, and Ghoul Lord. And I get really lucky here. This group's enchanter abruptly quit and they needed someone to fill in for crowd control, so I'm happy to oblige. And I recognize Zaldora, a no mage in this group. Actually a longtime guildie from Mangler. It's really sweet to see old guild mates. I joined voice chat with all of them and regretted <laughs> what static group I picked because these guys had me rolling. They were hilarious. They told me why their enchanter quit and it was one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. I actually grouped with them the next day to hear why firsthand. Then Dayshades told a story how he offended an entire WoW guild with one southern expression. I apologize for teasing y'all. I really can't say it on YouTube. It sounds horribly racist when misunderstood. This group goes so smooth and there's icing on the cake. The Ghoul Lord is one of the most valuable named in Classic because of a rare item. It was dropping like rain here with the Memorial Day bonuses. Short Sword of the Akesha. They're called Yaks. Everyone had one, so they gave this drop to me. It is the best weapon a tank can use. The warrior epic of classic, if you will. The proc on it generates a good amount of aggro, and it's really important for warriors who are bereft of aggro generation abilities. They generally go for about 1-2 chrono when a server first opens, and I get to 45 here. Hours later, my static group forms up, and we're doing the hole again. I catch Renfail again during a stream here at the entrance. We try to move down to Sword 2, and again, similar theme, we're just not ready. Disaster every time with a move. Something goes wrong with Invis, and immediately three mobs aggro. A Rock Golem, my new arch nemesis. Move over, druids. Rock Golems are the villain of this series. Mort, our necro, goes down first. I can keep everything but the Rock Golem mezzed. So Binzo, our cleric is out of mana quick, our tank Tabitha is losing, and the rock golem is barely scratched. Tabitha goes down. I fortunately get a charm off to help, and the rock golem aggro's onto me, and I'm getting max hit every round, and I die with the golem at 2%. I hate rock golems. So damn hard to kill. And we're just in this terrible spot where pathers could add on easy. Everyone dead gets rezzed by Benzo. Everyone's tapped on mana, but we eventually pull through. This zone is just unforgiving. We continue to move to the camp Soar 2, and we're in this hallway where ads do not stop coming. Never ending fight, so the cleric cannot catch a break. But we're free, but not for long. Look at this crap show. Two red rock golems. The cleric is empty, and the enchanter is struggling with resists. The enchanter is the only one who can mez these, they're too high for me. And it's over. His mana bar runs out. We get adds from the building nearby, and that's it. We fail to get to camp. We run to a corner near the docks to accept death. Four damn rock golems. This was one of my favorite zones, but it's quickly becoming a nightmare. My good memories betray me. Death number two. We were struggling so hard that we decided to stay at the entrance area. It was the best decision we made all night. Things went a lot smoother. Not as many rock golems here, and Pete's Alicious joined us. Amazing player, great name. He was the enchanter who rage quit over a milkshake. He told us why. It was late at night, and Pizzalicious was grinding with his group at Hamlord. He gets a craving and orders one thing. A chocolate milkshake from McDonald's. 
Simple. He uses DoorDash to deliver it to his place. First guy doesn't deliver. Puts in the order again. Second guy doesn't deliver. Puts in the order again. Third time. I'm getting this damn milkshake. So third time's a charm. After two hours of trying to get a chocolate shake to his door, it finally arrives. It's vanilla. Can you blame him? No. Hell no. You had one job, couldn't even do that. Most ridiculous rage quit I've heard. The camp was going all good until this one pull, and for some reason everything aggros. Here we go again. Mezzing like crazy, we're holding on until, guess who arrives? Rock Golem. Pathing Rock Golem adds on, Enchanter Pizza is out of mana, everyone is low on health, Benzo Cleric is running out, Tank Tabitha goes down, Mort goes down, and Benzo fortunately camps out so he can res us, but we're gonna have to wipe. Death number three hit a day. This zone has my number. We held on for as long as we could, but it just wasn't enough. We recover and met up. Here's some more mage box army shenanigans. Nothing broken at all. A true box server that's supposed to make this hard, but doesn't stock jack crap in reality. We recover and another rock golem death. Death number four. Worst day progress wise. It's hard to get anywhere like that. One golem is hard enough, but two. Cleric nearly dies, but we're able to pull out of this. And a little later, the group ended for the night. I stay on and I team up with a different static group in Soul B, Bugs and Bats. Just a lot less stressful. I can easily pull and crowd control here and get to 47. We actually get a name called the Death Beetle. I didn't see that the first time I was here. And it dropped some okay legs. And around midnight, I was about to log off, except you'll recognize this guy, Wolfdar. And he's also had enough of these friggin' mage box armies. Absolutely broken. He seemed to get just as frustrated as me with how prevalent this crap is too. With the levels, it got a lot easier to camp deeper in the hole. We went to a camp called Slab and got to team up with Pizzalicious again. Really good enchanter. But let's show another nail biter. My arch nemesis, Rock Golem, comes back. Two this time. I got an elemental charm to kill quicker. We get down golem one, but Benzo runs out of mana and we're on the ropes. We take a moment and the fight is back on. Two strong pets beating on the last golem, but Benzo is still out. Pizza's charm breaks and both moms are beating on him. Benzo has nothing to heal with. Pizza gets the charm back but dies immediately after as Tabitha can't rip aggro off of him in time. Pizza's pet is loose again. We get the last golem down, but not before our necro and group dies. Two people down. We get an add. Three mobs in camp now, but fortunately I can mez them all. My pet is tanking. We get down to the last two mobs. I reestablish charm, and the fight is over. Never a dull day. This day I get to level 49, one away from max level. But let's talk about the title of this video. So the last video I went over Project 1999's issues. What about the biggest problems with time lock progression servers? TLPs like Yellenak. This is the version of EverQuest I've spent the most time on. I love TLPs, but I don't feel that way anymore. The first issue, how time sensitive they are. In my experience, you got about six months to get in your max level on TLPs. And why? The low level grouping scene is gone. Not as much an issue on P99. Everyone is in such a rush to get max level that you better keep up or you'll be left behind. And it's a shame because the best part is the grind. But with only weeks to raid in content, there's no time to enjoy the scenery. It's nice at max level, but it sucks when you gotta catch up. Live tried to fix this problem with unrestricted boxing and implementing mercenaries, which are little helpers. Neither are available on TLPs. You almost have to play another character just to catch up because there's little help the longer the server goes. 
Honest boxing is challenging because you need a separate computer for each character. Real pain in the butt to do. But Yelenek is unique because it will be the first server to relax this true box restriction in a later expansion. But this complaint is not totally fair. This is a problem all versions of EverQuest have. It doesn't give a good reason to reuse old content or to encourage max level players to help out lower level players. Just no incentive at all. What about a legitimate problem only on TLPs? Oh, I got one for you. TLP, P99, and Live. This is the absolute worst problem I've ever seen playing EverQuest. A problem so bad, I quit Thornblade and I'm going to quit Yelenak. I am fed up and the fans deserve better. What is it? I'll show you a symptom. This is nearly the last gameplay I have recorded. I log on to do a finny kill in open world. My guild mobilizes because many of us need him for epic pieces. We're the only force in zone, and in about 30 minutes, we all get to the staging area and start clearing out the last few mobs blocking access to Finny. We kill the last mob in the way, we're ready to pull the boss, and our puller breaks the bad news. I'll just show it. Finny was almost dead already. And why? Because of this farmer crew right here. Everything we did was completely for nothing. We had to kill our way to get here, but this farming crew were already camped out at Finny spawn. They just logged in, kill them, sell the loot rights, and log out. Rinse, repeat, every respawn, every day. Finny is effectively locked down for the entire server by just these few players. Players, mind you, who don't even need the items. And Fip here actually trash talked me after getting the kill. Whatever. But we'll see them again later. Someone gets revenge on them. But to be clear, they did nothing wrong. So what problem are you talking about, I am Blaze? Bot crews? Mage armies? Rude players? None. They're all symptoms of a bigger problem. Monetization has murdered EverQuest. Oh, but you're a hypocrite, Ion. You bought bonus bags and use EXP pots. Oh yeah, true. But that's not the monetization that's killing EverQuest. No. Cosmetics, potion boosts here and there, bags, mounts. They just make the game more convenient. They're not game breaking. The absolute worst problem EverQuest has, the number one source of player toxicity, Chrono. Chrono is an in-game token that you can redeem for 30 days of subscription time, and you need a subscription to play on TLPs. So you can buy them legit from Daybreak for $17 a pop, but the key is they're also tradable in-game. You can trade US dollars for platinum, real life money traded for game money. This is called RMT. So what? What's so bad about Chrono then? It's how ruthless certain players are to get them, and how Daybreak does nothing to stop it. Some players take Chrono as an opportunity to make real life money. It's a job. They'll work to farm Chrono all day and then resell it illegitimately on third party sites for around eight to $10 a pop. People make good money doing this. And these people don't play TLPs because they like EverQuest. Oh, hell no. They play TLPs for one reason, to make money. And it also helps when the Chrono Yearn covered the six character subscriptions. It sustains itself. But why is this such a problem on TLPs? Chrono takes a lot less effort to farm when it sells for 500 plat on a new TLP instead of 5 million on an established server. Also, Classic, Kunark, and Velius are loaded with valuable items and critical quest pieces. Funky tunics, flowing black silk sashes, circle of shadow, and so on. Not to leave out epic pieces either. Everyone wants their epic weapon in Kunark, so the farmers will monopolize a quest mob and sell the loot rights to the highest bidder. In later expansions, Chrono farming takes longer, it's less easy, so it starts to fade away. But every year or two, a new TLP server launches and the Chrono farmers enact their stranglehold again. What do they do? These people will create a relatively automated six box crew 
on servers, mind you, that discourage boxing, there's code that's supposed to limit you to one character per computer. It's supposed to be hard to box if you follow the rules, but that doesn't work for Corona Farmers. Most of them use third-party software to bypass these restrictions. They'll automate and they'll play all six tunes from one computer, both bannable offenses, but nothing is done. You can spot them a few ways. They mostly run three to four mages because the pets are that broken in Classic. It'll also be five characters auto-following a driver. And what they do is monopolize every high-value camp or bottleneck epic piece on a server. Every single one. Cast drops from Hill Giants and Raid Mountains, high-value drops like Fungi Tunics and Sebelis, Golden Afridi Boots and Soul B, to selling loot rights like for J Boots or Epic Drops. This goes to Finny. This box crew are monopolizing Finny away from the whole server to sell exclusive epic items in exchange for Chrono, taking it away from legit players who actually need it to extort cash. But it's not just Finny, but every damn camp they can. But even worse is how Daybreak refuses to stop this abuse. Let's go deeper down the rabbit hole. Some Chrono farmers will sell power leveling services. At least they're a little helpful, right? No. Time is money. They want to power level your character as fast as possible to move on to the next customer. The more mobs they pull, the quicker they make Chrono. So you and your buddies set up shop in their zone, say Velka Tours. The camp is clear, nobody claims it. Get ready to get trained. Nobody told you they're camp in the whole zone and they'll do anything to kick you out. You're slowing down their quota by taking their mobs. I fought against a power level crew in Velkators who repeatedly trained my guild groups out. This guy was monopolizing the entire zone and training anyone who got in the way. Link is here for the story. Dozens of petitions. And did he get in trouble? <laughs> Barely. Just a short suspension after weeks of complaints. A slap on the wrist after the damage was already done. If not by trains, these people they'll sit at your camp and DPS race every fight, which is called kill stealing. You got banned for it in the early days of EverQuest. You get banned for it now on P99, but not here on TLP. Daybreak refuses to police their game. In fact, many people argue Daybreak spends more time policing their forums than they do their damn servers. So the rule now is DPS is king. In other words, Daybreak is saying, you're a problem, scumbag, not ours. EverQuest was always policed. Disruptive players were dealt with immediately by GMs because they sent a message to everyone. Play nice or you're out of here. And that threat kept players polite. That threat kept servers healthy and respectful. And I actually have a video on EverQuest rules if you're interested. That's the EverQuest that still mostly exists on Project 1999 and in our memories, but not here on TLP. And I might even get called out for complaining about this. Oh, get good scrub. The game has changed. Yeah, not in a good way. TLPs are inner cities. Lawless. Kill stealing, something that was never tolerated, is now the best strategy. Whoever does more damage wins the fight, no matter how dirty the tactics. Casual players are the casualties. Go do your assassin camp and guck, J Booth camp and Ocean of Tears, Finny Raid and Kedge Keep. Do all the work to hold down the camp and get that name to spawn. Finally does, you pull it, then a Chrono Farmer crew will appear in zone, fight you for it and when they win not if they win when they win they'll sell the loot back to you for a premium if not training you out in the first place that is and this is every high value camp and bottleneck item on the server and i see no reason why it'll stop because daybreak profits daybreak makes more money from the six memberships of a farmer than your one membership it would cost them money to pay for enforcement of rules Daybreak also makes money from casuals buying into the Chrono Scheme to pay farmer extortion. If Daybreak stopped this, they'd likely lose money. And that's why I feel it'll never stop. I honestly feel like EverQuest is in maintenance mode at this point. It's nothing more than a passive income stream for the owners, trying to squeeze every last dime they can out of us. Please share this if you feel strongly about it like I do. This is my favorite game, and it's so sad to see what it's become. It's also sad how P99 can police their game with unpaid volunteers, but Daybreak says it can't. Hell, monetize it, Daybreak. Make a server you pay a premium in exchange for active GM enforcement of the Play Nice policy. 
At minimum, do it for the first three expansions where this abuse is most rampant. But enough trashing TLPs, they also have the best redeeming feature. It's why I came here. Instancing. All the problems P99 has with overcrowded zones and endgame inaccessibility are fixed by instancing. If a zone hits a certain player threshold, it's overcrowded, a new empty zone will open, clear camps for all to move into. Unrest can handle 200 people on TLPs and like 30 on P99. What about the endgame? P99, there's only one raid mob for the entire server. Once dead, weak to respawn. On TLPs, you can create a private raid zone at any time to fight any target. Scarcity isn't the limitation, skill is. And this makes epics much more attainable on TLPs, so long as you get around the Chrono Farmer racket, that is. TLPs are the most accessible way to experience all expansions EverQuest has to offer in era with other people. But back on with the adventure. The Hole, Day 8. This is the day the series has been culminating to. Couldn't happen in more dramatic fashion. Tabitha already got to level 50, but now it's my turn. I open this door and see three mobs, one named. I try to lull the split and critical lull resist, my favorite. Everything aggros, except guess who? Rock Golem respawn. I ding level 50 and I don't even have time to appreciate it. I can't mess the golem, so I run out to the yard to kite it, using the solution I made up day one in Unrest. You know, how fitting. This group is able to tag the name Solo. Good. I charm the caster that's in the swarm and send it to help out. And then we had a second bard and group who charmed one too. Now I'm just kiting the rock golem. And all is going good, except the rock golem peels off of me to attack our only healer. Crap. Win EverQuest. Level 50, baby. Woo! Now it's just a mop-up job, and I can finally enjoy max level. It took me 64 hours to get here. Still more to do, but what a way to get there. What a way to finish. The first raid is this night, but there's some housekeeping to do. I went to Permafrost and met these nice barbarians. They were camping here for the same reason I was, armor quests. So this Patriarch drops a piece for the Warrior Boots, and the Elite Goblin Guards nearby drop a piece for my Bard Legs. So I help them out. Eventually it dropped. This is for the Lambent Armor quests. Flats, Reptox is a whole video dedicated to doing this quest line, so I'm gonna fast forward. I buy the gems, but I still need Lambent Stones for the final turn-in. And guess who has them? Wolfdar. Thank you, man. I gave him a tip in exchange for two, then went to the temple soul row and did the two turn-ins. Over my time in Lower Guck, I got pieces for the Lambent BP and legs, and I might as well finish them. Really nice blue color. But there's still a problem with my gear. I'm level 50, and I'm still wearing leather. I had the money, so I skilled up blacksmithing. It took me about 400 plat to get around 100 blacksmithing skill, which is a lot cheaper than P99. Thank you, Excalibur, for the gear there. Last order of business. Let's make the banded. And I'm good to go. Raid night. That will end the episode. Next, we'll focus exclusively on raiding and my thoughts on live servers, what problems they have. Those are the servers of the most recent expansion, like the 28th or something. Scratch that. Breaking news. Remember this guy, Fip? He actually made this video. So his Finny Monopoly pissed off the wrong guy, Taxman, who I hear became the most infamous player on Yelenak. Taxman blatantly cheats, doesn't even give a damn about hiding it. So he uses hacks to warp around zones and train people. Taxman was reported dozens of times over days, and despite all that, he still wasn't banned. So desperate people took to the forums to call it out, and the moderator shut down those posts. They said, use petitions to report Taxman. Uh, they already did. The forum posts were made because a blatant cheater wasn't being banned after being formally reported over and over. 
Where's the enforcement daybreak? So watch what Taxman does to Fip. He warps all around the zone and grabs a bunch of mobs and then warps right back to Fip and trains a boatload onto his chrono farming monopoly. Let the trash take out the trash. Beautiful. And also here's proof that Fip was chrono farming. Look at the tells. He's blatantly exchanging chrono for the items. Taxman eventually got banned, but this is EverQuest 2022, y'all. Gotta love it. Four deaths, so four consequences. These will be the last consequences too because deaths on raid don't count. It took me 12 total deaths to get to 50 and the hole cost half of them. That zone is friggin hard. I have two women in my life. Let's give them a good day. Ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> the hair ties look all ribbons.